Hey there, this is Mitch Joel from Twist Image and Six Pixels of Separation. We're live at Search Engine Strategies Toronto 2008, and I'm with the one, the only, the world renowned Brian Eisenberg, co founder of Future Now Inc., and co author of two excellent books, Call to Action and Waiting for Your Cat to Bark, and the soon to be released, Always Be Testing. So, Brian, about to do your keynote, tell us a bit about what it's going to be about. Well, Mitch, I think markers are having some real serious issues today. I mean, obviously, the recession's starting to hit. Um, people are concerned about their spending. Uh, we're starting to see customers are starting to ignore the online channel a little bit more. They're not responding the way they used to. Um, and with limited resources, you'd imagine that markers may change their behaviors a little bit. And so this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about how they need to rethink their strategies uh, to be more effective in uh, search engine optimization and pay-per-click marketing. Now, one of the things I know you're passionate about is the idea of not just how to convert traffic or the value of traffic, but really turning it into actionable business. And I know you've, you've mentioned many times that one of the first things we're seeing cut is the idea of the optimization, which is really complete insanity. It is, I mean, you know, I was at a uh, workshop that I did um, about three weeks ago with a multi-billion dollar retailer. and They were telling me how, you know, they cut out this conversion optimization line item out of their budget. And I'm like, where in any normal world would you cut out something that it's supposed to make you buck 20 for every buck that you put in. And it just didn't make any sense to me. It's like, you know, maybe what they were doing with the vendor didn't make sense. Maybe they need to find another way to accomplish their goal. But certainly, uh, conversion optimization is something that you can't afford to, to miss on. Because and it's the old thinking of marketing, right? Everyone's stuck on the concept of bringing more traffic and adding new campaigns and stuff like that without realizing that those campaigns are literally just tapping people and sort of say, hey, come on. And never continuing that conversation, like, oh, come, join me here. And then they leave the conversation just cold. Uh, you know, where 65% of most traffic is dropping off within the first two clicks of visiting a website, there, there isn't much conversation going on. How are we, as marketers and people interested in search engine, supposed to win this battle at this point? I think it's a reframing of the budget items. Um, you know, when we do this with clients and when we do this with prospects, we'll literally go through calculators and show them, okay, here's what you're spending on all the different things to bring in your traffic. What are you actually spending once they get there? What are you spending on analytics, right? It used to be an expensive thing. You have to spend a lot of money on tools. Not anymore. Today you can get the tools for free, right? So are you spending it in analysts? Are you spending it in process to take action? Are you spending it on copywriting? Are you spending it in customer surveys? That used to be expensive. You can get that for free today, right? From like tools like 4Q. So the tools shouldn't be the issue. People are definitely a challenge, and so what I'm going to advise everybody today is to think about process, because the most successful companies have it as part of their culture. If you look at the Intuits, the Amazons, the Apples, the Dells, what they've incorporated as part of their, uh, their whole thinking is traffic and customer experience and metrics all in one, and that really makes it work. So what would be, without giving away the juice, what's the first sort of part of that process or the roadmap? Well, I think the first thing people need to do is um, avoid dealing with the data diarrhea that they have. Uh, you know, we're all overwhelmed with data and we keep looking for more and more data and looking for the right tool and the right thing that's going to give it that massive insight to, to get success. And this, that doesn't happen. Um, so if we avoid that and start thinking of, hey, that click only meant I got your attention. I really need to, I'm responsible for giving you as my visitor a real conversation and focus some of the energy that we've been spending on just driving traffic into speaking to them once they land on the website where we have the most control, they'll see it, tremendous gains. Also, you've just finished your new book that's going to be coming out soon called Always Be Testing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about that and what the sort of inspiration was for it. Yeah, well, you know, I think there's, there's basically, you know, two things that make marketers successful today. Um, you know, we are a content-driven society. You know, we've always loved content. Uh, we have a content addiction, right? I mean, you used to only get it on TV, occasionally radio and stuff like that. But now, you know, we're getting it 24-7, you know, in all different formats. And so we need to spend more time planning real content that's meaningful to our customers and help them along their purchase cycle. The second one is you need to always be testing, right? You got to you got to plan for better content but stop idling when you're, when you're in execution mode because you know what? I, I have one of my clients the most successful and I'll talk about him later today. Part of what's made him so successful is just like, you know what, this is the date we're getting in for everything live. Whatever doesn't get live, doesn't go live. They just fix it in optimization. And that's part of what's made him get onto the Inc. 500, one of the fastest growing companies at over 3,000% uh, growth rate year after year, right? And it's that, it's that killer focus on the numbers, on the, on the experience, but getting things done. 
Awesome, and I know people can find you at grok.com where you also have a really interesting marketing feed. So let's close up by just talking a bit about what's going on there. Yeah, so back to that data overload, right? I mean, you know, I, I myself read, you know, 365 feeds and it's, it's just overwhelming to see, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I leave for a few hours, I come back and, you know, there's, you know, 800 more posts. It's like no one can keep up with that. And so um, with a partner of ours, OneSpot, we developed a, a new feed for, um, for marketers that basically aggregates, you know, thousands of the top feeds and just filters through them and finds you the most relevant ones based on you know what's happening right now, best of the week, best of the month, and so that you don't have to spend time going through those thousands of feeds every day. And people can find that at grok.com? At news.grok.com.com. Yep. Awesome, always a pleasure, Ryan, thank you. Thank you so much.